Welcome to the Knowledge for Men show. Your life will never be the same. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. I want to die empty of regret. I want to die empty of my best work. We don't understand who we are. Instead, we're living out somebody else's narrative. What one man can do, another man can do. If it's been done, it can be done again. Being yourself and being your truest, most authentic self in every moment. If it scares you or makes you a little afraid, do it. Follow your heart and your gut. The first stage. I think it's finding you, like finding out who I am today. Stuff will not work. You will have things that fail. Success is when you're a happy, fulfilled person. How do you define success? It's your life and you are the creator of the movie script that is your life story. Attention. If you are a frustrated man who feels like he's not getting the results he wants in his life, health, wealth, relationships, and personal growth, then I've got a powerful free video training for you to help you become a strong, grounded man so you can unlock unlimited power in your life, business, and relationships. Go to kfmconfidence.com to get instant access to this training. Again, that's kfmconfidence.com. If you want a Cliff Notes version of the best material that I've learned after 300 interviews on this podcast about being a stronger, more powerful man, then it's all here at kfmconfidence.com. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm here with Alejandro Shaban, a TV host, New York Times bestselling author of Think Skinny, Feel Fit, and he's a certified consultant on nutrition and wellness. He's also the founder of Yes, You Can. Alejandro, welcome to the show. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Alejandro, glad to have you here. Let's dive right in. Do you have a favorite success quote or some sort of saying that you've lived by that's helped you on your journey? Uh... You know, my, my quote every day, it's like, feel the fear and do it anyways. I ask myself every day, what would you do if you had no fear? And I just go and do it. I just take action instantly. What has this led you to? By you feeling the fear and just doing it anyway, what has this led you to in your in your professional career? You know, when I used to work at El Pollo Loco, I was telling you, you know, that was most definitely very challenging and, and you know, I had full. I was full of fear. I actually don't think that I would have done anything differently, of course. But I sometimes wish I would have made smarter choices and I would have been more informed about certain aspects of life. But with everything I've gone through, I've learned that those specific downfalls are what have taught me life's hardest lessons. And, and I was actually talking to a friend of mine about a business situation, right? And I, I was basically giving, giving up the same advice I gave myself in 2008 and I told him don't be afraid to fail be afraid not to try and just like feel the fear and just do it anyways yeah I think we'll always fail we will always be victims if we allow ourselves to be but it's how we face our obstacles that can change our perspective entirely Absolutely. it's all there to build us and shape us into stronger and wiser humans and I remember you know just and, and you were saying that yeah you you weren't you weren't even a waiter in that moment yeah we were right? chatting earlier so El Pollo <laughs> Loco for those that don't know and they're like what is that it, it's like a it's a Mexican American sort fast of, sort of fa- it's a fast food restaurant yeah so you weren't yeah. a waiter uh, just <laughs> you were really like a cashier cook <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not I'm not laughing like at cheap. you I'm laughing at the joke and so you're at a, a fast food Mexican American American restaurant. How long ago was this? Your your, uh, your cook. Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Oh. Okay. So r- roughly. Okay. So and here you are today, a TV host. You're you're acting in in different uh, television shows and dramas, and you, you have a New York Times bestselling book. Have you, is writing is that a thing of yours? Did you grow up writing well throughout school and things like that? No, no way. I remember in two thousand eight when I was broke, financially broke. Uh, I remember telling my dad, I'm 27 years old and I'm I'm a loser, right? I haven't done anything with my life. My friends are all married and right. you know they have businesses and I'm I'm just a failure. And my dad says, "Why don't you tell your story? Why don't you write your story?" And I was like, "What story?" He's like, "You were 314 pounds. You went through bulimia, anorexia, and you know now you're healthy." And I was like, "No, dad." So he sent me a box with all my pictures on my high school books and all my memories, my uniform. So when I received it, I actually connected again with uh-huh. that 314 pounds kit, 
right? So in that moment was when I literally, I went online on like and started searching and, and finding out how to write a book. And I self-wrote my first book. And I was telling you before, I was, you know, just pitching it to, to every editor I, I could find. And, and nobody really, you know, pay attention to me. Nobody liked it. And there was this woman called Diane and she wrote back and she said, you have no talent to become a, an author. Uh, oh my gosh. Literally like that. She has, you have no talent to become an author. You should pursue something different. Oh my so gosh. It's your time. She said that. So here you go, Whoa. Diane. <laughs> this New York Times bestseller is for you. <laughs> Wow. I mean, just, she just takes the courage to write something. So she can't even just say like, Hey, you know, unfortunately at this time we're busy or we don't have the time to do this. She just says, you have no talent and you have no business being a writer here. Here you are, New York Times bestselling author. Man, what, what uh, a story here though before. So you were, oh, was that 314 pounds as a kid? Yes. 314 I was, uh, pounds. Wow. 314 pounds when I was 15 years old to undergoing, you know, internal and obviously external battles with anorexia and bulimia to literally losing it all. You know, I, I think that life can hit you hard. It can hit you as hard as you allow it. I believe all the pain that I underwent and some very good advice from my father is what led me to where I am today, right? And that day when I was in the darkest of my day, he said, hey, Alejandro, why don't you tell your story? And, 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 and I think that's why I'm here because having written my first book and going back to my childhood and remembering what I had felt made me reconnect with that fat little boy. And, and I think that fat little boy who felt awkward, lonely, ugly, sad, and if I had felt like that once, I knew thousands and millions of people were probably feeling the same thing. I just right. wanted to help and connect and save all these people from that daily misery that I was going through, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I started doing. And well, of course, in this process, Yes, You Can was born. Mm -hmm. And I've never felt as lucky as I do today. I truly am blessed to be able to do what I love every single day and to help people, man, to help people yeah. transform their lives. Yeah. So what 314 pounds is where you were and, and, and where are you now? I'm 165 pounds. 165 I mean, I had, pounds. I had a burger and a pizza yesterday, so I probably stick <laughs> 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 today. How? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your cheat days. You got. You got to live. You got to live. All right. It shouldn't be tortured. So, how long did it take? 314 pounds to what? Uh, like, how um, long is it? Is this? A, is this a two-year transformation? Is this a, a five-year transformation? It was like, uh, it was like uh, two years. Two-year transformation. <laughs> And yeah. you, you hit 165 or was it like 200 or? It was like in two years, I hit like 220. And then it took me like another year to hit like 180. Yeah. And then That's, I would say yeah. you know, the, the last 10 years, I've been able to be fit. But okay. it has taken me 25 years to actually achieve and, and maintain that weight mentally. Right. It's an everyday ongoing battle with myself and with the old habits in order for me to keep it yeah. off. So when you were three, so the, before you, you even, your dad, you know, gave you this aha moment to write the book and share your story before that you, you were overweight. And so what did this process look like for you to, to lose the weight and, and what, so why did you start that journey? Uh, there's a lot of overweight people or people who have, you know, maybe they don't have the body they want. And of course they would like to have a better body, but what was it for you that made you go all the way? Like you didn't, I'm sure you had some hiccups, but you, you actually did it. Like you actually completed the self-transformation and, and you got the body. You know, basically I was going through high school and it was very hard for me to actually, you know, stand up and, 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 and talk and, and live right around everyone else. I was being bullied every day. I'm sure many people who are listening are feeling the same way. So I, I, I just, you know, one day, October 27th, 1997, I woke up in the morning and I said, enough, enough, you know, enough, enough. Like that was the day when I woke up, I looked myself in the mirror. I was, you know, in my underwears and I was 314 pounds. I had men boobs. I couldn't even look at my, like, my, you know, private parts. Right. It was very hurtful. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sleep. So that day, I was just tired of being overweight. I was just tired of being, you know, like, to, to actually carry this, this way around, that way that wasn't mine. So I started just, like, you know, trying every 
diet out there and doing every crazy thing. Uh, and, and I think I lost the first 10 and 20 pounds not eating and just eating the wrong things. And then I started reading more about nutrition and really getting prepared and really getting some, you know, guidance in order for me to actually get the tools to transform my life and to start dieting. Like I, I remember the first hundred pounds, I was almost anorexic and, you know, I was fainting everywhere. And that's where, you know, my dad and my mom, they got involved because they didn't even know. I was hiding because remember back then, 1997, like diets were for women. Right, right, right. right. We didn't diet. Like men were supposed to be strong and built and, and, and fat and big. That was at least my dad's mindset. Uh huh. So I had to go through a lot of, you know, physical, but also mental um, training in order to get rid of this old mindset. Right. So you were, it sounds like there's a lot of education that came that showed you what you should and shouldn't do that, that led to some results. And, and, you know, I think that right now the old way of thinking is definitely, you know, the fat diet approach. And in my humble opinion, fat diets, they do not address the emotional weight. Even a quick search in Google, we can see there's just stylish weight loss plan that promised dramatic results. But these diets are not healthy and they do not result in long-term weight loss. And, and we have discovered that people need to avoid that instant gratification. There are no easy fixes. In fact, these diets are sometimes very, very dangerous. For me, there is no perfect cure for body image. Mm -hmm. I think we must see it as a journey more than destination. It's right. like a marathon, not a sprint. It's, it's not like a, a six-week plan, an eight-week diet, a 12-week diet. Exactly. It, it's, it's a lifestyle change. <laughs> Correct. It's a I lifestyle always change. Exactly. I say that. I always encourage a weight loss program to be more than just that, right? A program. And I see it, as you said, a lifestyle. In a way, I think we must relearn and retrain our habits in order to find the results we've been looking for. And that's what we did with Yes You Can. It's very visual and helps you identify how much to eat and when to eat it. We don't count calories. We don't count points. We keep it simple and real. Five times a day, you have to eat and we teach people how to eat. And, and we include the four essential pillars, which are um, nutrition, movement, emotional he health, and the success you achieve with our supplements. So nutrition, movement, emotional health, and then supplements. Correct. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, for yourself, if we back up just a little bit, because uh, there's a lot of people who start the journey of wanting to improve their physical appearance and, and their emotional health. But for yourself, what was the moment where you finally said, oh, I can actually do this? Like you started making some progress and you saw that, whoa, I'm, I'm actually getting somewhere here. Like this, this is actually happening. Um... Man, I think that I like I never really thought of like, oh, I'm I'm getting there. I was just like doing it so hard and I was just like taking action every day and doing my movement routines and eating the right things. Because as I was telling you, I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was still an overweight person, even though I had lost more than a hundred pounds. So right. it took me right. years, right, to like rearrange my mind and my self image in order to say, Oh, wait, I did this. Right, right, right. Even when I had lost more than 100 pounds, I was still going to the extra large section in the store. Your For mind so was wired that, mind. Or that way. Exactly, exactly. And my mom, I remember my mom was telling me, no, you're not an extra large anymore. And I used to buy these extra large shirts and, you know, 38 pants, wearing them very big, thinking that I was still that person. So it took me not only that physical strength, but also that mental. That's why I include the emotional health because I think it's essential for anybody who's trying to lose weight or achieve anything. It needs to be, you know, a process that comes inside out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you weren't giving yourself all that credit for all the work you did do when you lost 100 pounds. It's like it wasn't enough. It was like I have to lose more, I have to lose more, which, which of course that was the goal, but still give yourself credit for – for all the work you've done. Yeah, when I look back and people ask like, oh, what advice do you have for me? And I'm like, you know, if I remember in that moment, I just had determination, focus, consistency. I feel in order to be successful, you really have to want it for the right reasons, right? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. For your personal growth and well-being in, in your professional career, career, in your health, your emotional well-being. Before, when I was trying to lose weight, I was trying to lose weight for my friends or because mm -hmm. I wanted to so party. External validation. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that was the uh, wrong reasons. 
that those were the wrong reason. Uh -huh. Correct. It's not sustainable. Uh, exactly. As soon as that gratification ends, you know, your commitment is going to end. So I think that it has to be a commitment to yourself, not because you want a girlfriend or a wife, not because you want to be like, you know, you want to resemble anyone else, but because you know that's the right time for you. Like I talk about in the book, you first have to make a commitment to yourself. That's the first person you have to actually make peace with. I think this directly applies not just with health and fitness and the way you appear, like physically look and how you feel, but, but equally I could see this in career or business. Like if you're doing it, if you're, if you're trying to crush, you know, your business and, you know, crush it in your career and you're doing it for these external reasons, like I want to impress my friends or impress these people. Like, like it's, it's, I feel like it's not enough because the journey is so hard and it's just not strong enough to, to help you overcome the big challenges of these weak external reasons. 100%. When people ask me, like right now, I think I have overcome two huge uh, obstacles in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Being bankrupt in 2008 and uh -huh. being 314 uh, pounds when I was yeah. 15. Yeah. And when you really think about it, like it's, it's actually the same daily habits that would make someone more successful at, you know, being healthy or at being successful being an entrepreneur, like the right. same habits, right? You have to make a commitment. You have to be focused. You have to have, you know, your, your short term goals, mid term goals, long term goals for me, daily goal setting, right? For example, something that I absolutely never leave behind is my notebook. I write everything down in my notes, my yeah. daily affirmation, my yeah. feedback, my daily to do's. It keeps, it keeps me organized, focused. If I happen to get sidetracked, you know, I can always refer back to my notebook to make sure I'm still aligned with where I was at the beginning of my day. And of course, technology does help also. I have countless reminders on my phone for all sorts of things like, okay, I have to drink water every 30 minutes or, hey, I have to take a second to clear my mind and simply breathe. But there is something about taking the time to write things out that really helps me connect with my daily commitments or, you know, my, my meals every three hours. I also send voice notes to my team in order to save time. And those are just a couple of tricks that I practice um, not only with my diet, but with my business. The, the support we need from friends and family. This is one of the main and most common difficulties that I read and I hear from, from everyone, right? Oh, my family wasn't on board. My, my family wasn't supporting my business. My family or my friends or my girlfriend or my boyfriend does not support me. It's difficult to eat healthy because no one understands my goals. It can be very discouraging when you feel you're alone, when you first mm -hmm. yeah. start a new routine or a new business. Like being accepted is everything for most of us. Mm -hmm. And when the people you love the most are dismissive and make it even harder for you, it's probably easier to just go back to your old habits and feeling like, an outsider in your own home, right? Right. Yeah. It, being accepted is primal. It, it, like if you're not accepted, if we were to go back hundreds or even thousands of years, it could mean that you're going to die. Like you're not going to be a part of the tribe. You're not a part of the community. And if you're on your own, you're going to, you're likely to die. And, and you're not going to be able to, I think there's even something there with, you're not going to be able to procreate. Like your brain wants to be able to stay connected to someone to be able to continue the journey, you know, your, your genes and when you're shunned out of a community or a group, like rejection is such a powerful force, I think, in humans when we get rejected. And to be rejected by those you care about is, or even those you love, is, is that is a strike to, I think, not just who we are to, you know, as a person or as a man, but I think to like our biology, to who, who we are at our core. 100%. I think we're all looking for, for, you know, acceptance and we all want to be accepted and we all want to be loved. And at the same, you know, it doesn't matter if you're losing weight or if you're starting your own business. We all wanted to do it because we want to feel more love. So when you're not, yeah. you tend to go back to, you know, your old habits. You tend to like lose motivation because, hey, I'm not meeting your goal. And, and, you know, you have to ask yourself, are, are there any unrealistic goals, right? Maybe the numbers of pounds you're setting for yourself. For me, this is a big one, right? Feeling discouraged because you didn't lose those 10 pounds in one week. You thought you would. But were you realistic with that goal? Did you really work to accomplish it or were you shooting too high? Like I was telling a friend of mine the other day who's training for a 5K but has never participated in an event like this in his life. And he has three months to get ready and plans on running 5K every day until the event. I told him, hey, you're going to burn out or most likely injure yourself. So I recommended him to start slow, 
work his way of maybe he should, I don't know, start by walking the half the distance first, then jog half the distance and see how his body feels first, then start adding to that distance until he built resistant and feels comfortable with, you know, whatever he's doing. You can start running before you learn how to walk, right? And I think it applies in your exercise routine, in your healthy habits, in your business. It's the same thing. What do you mean by that? You can start running before you can walk. Well, like, you know, that you need to start walking first. Like you need to start, I mean, you need to start, I'm sorry, you can start, you need to start walking right before you can run. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought you had this like really new concept. I was like, whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So that was just a mistake. I was like, I was like, damn, Alejandro's about to drop some knowledge. Okay. <laughs> um, what I thought you were going to say was like a ready fire aim approach, which is like, you don't always have to know everything before you can, before you start, which is what I believe is true for almost everything I've done. I don't know how I'm going to do a lot of things. But luckily, there's this awesome tool called Google and reaching out to friends and mentors and support and hiring coaches and consultants who know exactly what to do. And so I just feel like there's no way anyone could say, I don't know what to do at this point in life. Maybe 50 years ago, you could have. But I just think it's no longer about not knowing what to do. It's about having full control. It's about self-mastery is, is I think, what it is, success. Like if you can master yourself, you can figure it out and just do more do more we're so caught up in the how and and you were saying like we find answers everywhere right if we're in social media or if we're on google or if we're talking to friends there are you know ideas everywhere but there are not so many people that actually go and implement those ideas and take action we're so scared of failing we're so scared of making mistakes that we are we get paralyzed by them so you know, I think that I was reading 64 Shots yesterday and, you know, they were talking about that. It's a great book by Kevin Robbins. And, you know, they were saying if you wait too long to launch your idea, then your idea is old already. So just start with whatever you have now and start fixing it and start, in, you know, improving it. But but don't wait until it's perfect because then it, it's going to get old. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's just if it, and if it doesn't work, like you don't have any you have nothing like, <laughs> like, you don't. If it, if it doesn't work, you don't have any like build up to it. At least if you just get started, like you got momentum, there are things on the table. And what's interesting is even billion dollar companies follow a similar, you know, method. Like when the iPhone came out, it really wasn't that good, but they still launched it. There was, I was working at Apple when they launched the first iPhone and it wasn't that good. There were so many features and functions that it did not have. And there were many upset people, but at the same time, there was a line out the door of buyers. And, mm-hmm. and and then next year they just improved it and they improved it and they improved it. And then look at, I mean, you can look at all these companies like Airbnb, you look at Netflix, you go like Amazon, all these companies, they launched something, they got, it was all right. And then they just listened to the people and then they just improved it. They improved it. They improved it. And of course, you know, that continued to grow their business. And I think just waiting for the perfect product, you're too late. You're, you're too, or too late. whatever it is, man. If you're waiting for the perfect girl, like, like you're just waiting all your life or trying to improve yourself before you can talk to that girl. Yes, you should definitely improve yourself as a man, but you can also go talk to that girl and say hi too. <laughs> she, she'll like the fact that you're on the journey or I think we postpone because we're scared. And, and back to your quote, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah, hundred percent. We we actually went through it with our company. I remember I launched Yes You Can in two thousand and twelve, and I didn't sell one kit after twenty one days. The supplements, right? For the people. The supplements. Okay, because yeah. Yes You Can, they're like, okay, what are we doing? Stickers? What is he? <laughs> yeah, yes okay, you supplement can make company. A weight loss plan with a Latin flavor. So I actually launched a weight loss plan, a weight loss plan for Hispanics, right? Okay. Uh, when I was doing the benchmark, and I was like, okay, there are so many weight loss plans out there. There's nothing catered to the 75 million Hispanics in this country. So I actually developed a whole plan, the nutrition guide, the supplements, the flavors, the emotional well, the movement routines, everything thinking about us and thinking about the 35 uh, million Hispanics that there so are in the you niche, So you niche down. You, you niche down. Exactly. You found, yeah. you, you found a niche that... You know, and then you were able to more la- laser blue target ocean strategy, right? Blue exactly. ocean strategy, rather than a red ocean strategy, which is just like you know, fitness supplements for all. <laughs> Correct, and and that happened because you know when I when I wrote my first book, it was called De Gordo a Galan uh, in Spanish, right? And you know, nobody really bought the book. I put it on Amazon. I self wrote it. I paid two hundred and seventy bucks 
to this editor on Craigslist to edit my book. <laughs> Because I had no money, right? I was working. Wait, at is, this, is this the New York Times bestseller? Yes. <laughs> shut, shut up, dude. Shut. I, I, I am. <laughs> I, that's yeah. that's amazing. Yes, man. I, you know, I remember. I used to listen to Paulo Coelho and to yeah. T. Hart Ecker, which yeah. actually I have to tell you right now that you know I have. You know, when they told me about Knowledge for Men, I was so excited to meet you because I remember going through this struggle. I remember listening to the episode 28. You said Knowledge yeah. for Men, episode 28. Yeah, I interviewed, I interviewed T.I. Becker. Yeah, really good episode. Yes. I heard it like 10 times. And, you know, it actually inspired me to, you know, to get moving and to write the book. And back in 2009, I was, I wrote the book. I sold my iPod on Craigslist to 70 bucks. And I went and I found an editor. I edited my quote unquote book and I put it on Amazon, right? I started it. I didn't know what was going to happen years after. So after months and months and months, they invited me to join Hispanic soap opera on Univision, right? And then they invited me to promote the soap opera. And instead of promoting the soap opera, I said, I'm going to talk about my book. I'm going to talk about like my product, right? So I went to this amazing show called Don Francisco, which is our David Letterman. And, you know, I started talking about my book and my story. And when I came back home, I went online because I wanted to see my dad and my mom. They were back in Venezuela and I was excited. I was like, I want to know if they saw it. I want to know because like when you went to Don Francisco, like you made it, right? That was like the biggest thing ever. So I went online to see if my dad and my mom like had written me or had said anything about me being on the show. And I found that I have 3,211 orders oh on Amazon God. of this like book that I wrote from like Craigslist, right? So I was like, whoa. So I think in that moment, everything changed because I started thinking as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I started preparing yeah. myself and I said, wait a second, why are people interested in this story? Right. And of course, it was in Spanish. So in that moment, I said, I have to do the benchmarking. And I looked at every weight loss plan that's out there, right? And I was like, there's nothing for Hispanics. And if you look at all of these diet plans, a lot of the consumers are Hispanic people. So we're 75 million documented Hispanics in the U.S. and there was nothing actually made by us for us. So instead of complaining and instead of like wondering, I started doing. So I spent three years of my life since 2009 to 2012 developing the first and only weight loss plan uh, with a Latin flavor. And that's how Yes You Can was born. 2012 and after 21 days i i didn't sell any product like nobody bought one product for me and i felt like a failure i had you know thousands of dollars of debt um but the same thing right starting from scratch going on twitter tweeting whenever i got my first client december 21st i remember i called the client myself I said I was a call center representative. I didn't tell her that I was the CEO, right? And I was like, hey, Lee Smith, hi. This is Gabriel from Yes You Can. How can we help you? And we started like developing this relationship with her. And then she recommended to someone else. And I recorded my calls with her, right? Me coaching her. And I posted that on YouTube. And, and that's how we started the momentum. And, you know, now Yes You Can is a $50 million <laughs> company. And... <laughs> How? I don't know. You were pretending I, you know, to be someone. <laughs> yeah, I was pretending to be Gabriel. And no, the funny thing is that the president of the company, who was my business partner, who is my business partner, right? He was Pedro. So it was Gabriel and Pedro from the call center. He was the CEO and the president. <laughs> we responding to calls. So we were like tweeting the number, right? A Metro PCS number, like I mean, I shouldn't have said <laughs> the name, uh, but that's fine. So the, the, you know, we were tweeting the number because back then Facebook was just starting. Right, YouTube right. was just starting. So we were like tweeting the numbers like this 786 number from Miami and, and like tweeting and tweeting and tweeting. And I had my celebrity friend saying, hey, can you please post a picture with my product? Please, I have no money, but can you please tweet it? And, and that's how we got started. And then she recommended the product to someone else. And that's how, you know, the momentum start, started going. So when I looked at it, and if you see the evolution of the brand and how we started it, you know, four years ago, and, and the packaging and the colors and, you know, I mean, you look at it, and you're like, how, how did I actually launch this, right? 
<laughs> it wasn't what I wanted, but it got me started. And I think that everyone who is listening, you know, is just do more. Things are going to get fixed. Things are going to get improved. But I think the client, the customer is going to tell you exactly how they want the product, right? It's not about what you want, it's what the client wants. So I think they have developed Yes You Can into this huge community, into this huge, massive movement mm -hmm. called Yes You Can. Yeah. Now we have coaches around the country. Now we have thousands of people following the plan. We're only in the United States, but we're planning on going to Mexico, Central America, and South America in the next five years. And, and you know, it's just about that. It's It's about just like, Stop talking because I had the opportunity to just like stay with that book or just wander around like how, how come they haven't invented it? I said, okay, I'm going to take the responsibility. I'm going to do it myself. I didn't have the money. I have a $12,000 debt with the bankruptcy lawyer. Uh -huh. uh, but even though I didn't know the how, but I just knew I wanted and I just knew I was going to do it. So yeah. just take more action, man. Yeah. And this really wasn't that long ago, this whole story that you shared. It, it was in 2012 we started the company. Yeah, yeah. What I'm getting here too is your story just matters. It, it sounds, you know, very, uh, what is it called? Bootstrap when you're, right? You're, get, you're putting your business together and like, you know, you're not really sure exactly how things are going to work. But I think what matters, pe people really resonate with your, your authentic, your true, real story. I think people are okay with not, you know, it being perfect. When what they really are doing is connecting to your story and they feel like they're a part of a community. They feel like they're a part of something in, in, in that beginning part and probably even still to this day. But I, I think we focus on trying to make it perfect and then people will like us. But if we're just authentic, true and real, I think people are okay with a couple couple mistakes or things not being, you know, it's just not being, you know, 100%. Yeah, man. And I would first reassured everyone that they're not alone in feeling that they're alone, right? We all feel lost at some point. And if we remember that, you know, need to be a little bit lost first to find what we're looking for, realizing your loss, I think is the first step to living the life you want and you deserve. It's what you choose to do once you've accepted your reality and let go of unnecessary expectations and bullshit of how you thought or think or your life should be. You know, I would tell this person that every single one of us has a purpose, right? I would ask them to share with me that one thing that excites them the most, that one thing that, you know, makes them better at, that anyone else they know, that's their purpose. And, and I think that God and life and, you know, the universe, whatever your religion is, you know, it has given us exactly what we need to tell our story. I think we're all put on this air to live, to cherish, to enjoy, and to teach the world that one thing only we're born with. I think we all have a purpose and we'll always remain a constant inspiration to each other. And when I go back and look at my story and I'm like, wow, I was bankrupt in 2008 and I felt that was the worst thing that could happen. Now, when I tell the story, I'm like, this is the best thing that could happen. Like this makes my story better. And when I looked at myself, being 314 pounds and, and complaining about that overweight kid that couldn't enjoy his, you know, um, uh, like teen years. I was like, no, that's the perfect thing for my story. Like I was created because of that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and now I can, I can actually share, you know, my life and my downfalls and I can share my obstacles and, and that makes me better. Uh, but I think that we all have it. We just sometimes are looking on the outside instead of looking on the inside. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we have everything we need and, and people are looking for like passion, right? I, I want to be passionate about something. Just close your eyes, you know, put your hands in your heart and really feel it and see what makes your heart beat, right? What makes you excited? What makes you wake up in the morning? I think that's your passion right there. Stop looking around. We all want the car, the Ferrari, the, you know, the extravaganza, and we forget that everything starts from within. Mm -hmm. what, what I just got from that is your biggest pain and struggle, which was you being overweight and broke and, and, and you know, being bullied and lacking self-confidence and, you know, not even being able to see your, 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 your private parts for <laughs> that's, that's pain. It, your biggest pain and struggle is now one of your biggest assets that has fueled 
your entire organization and that has impacted, I think it's safe to say, millions of people around the world. Well said, yes. And we go back to what you said before, Andrew, fear. Fear yeah. of the unknown, fear of not knowing or understanding my capacity as a man or as a human, right? Not understanding what I was capable of. Like everything we want is always on the other side of fear. And I tell myself that every day. My clouded mind didn't let me see past that cloth that I would use to clean the tables at Pollo Loco. Uh, <laughs> you know, it didn't right. let me see past the fact that I was just a simple waiter. I felt as, well, not even a waiter. Andrew says that I wasn't even a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, waiter's like a, rest, like a nice sit-down restaurant. A Pollo Loco is like saying I'm a waiter at McDonald's. Like, <laughs> But man, eight years ago, you were working at El Pollo Loco, and I'm pretty sure I heard you say that your your business is, is, is doing $50 million in sales a year. It's crazy, man. And, you know, just be proud of who you are. I was ashamed of who I had become back in 2008 and it wasn't until I had accepted that this experience too would shape me and prepare me for life and for the life that I was able to start believing in myself again. You know, again, it goes back to like fear and the ability to like become your own leader. You know, I was a victim. I was the whole time being a victim and, you know, I think I learned my ability to lead and be a leader. Mm -hmm. I think when you lead by example, you're always on top of your game. A true leader will identify his or her purpose, right? They will do what they love and inspire others to do the same thing. And when you lead, you are naturally grateful. You have a winning attitude. You value the power in your words. You are a teacher. You're aware of your actions and your reactions. I think you become a positive influence for those around you. Uh, and we're right now with social media, we want to you know, follow. I think leaders don't make followers. They make more leaders and we need more leaders in this world. And I think everyone who is listening, just stop being a follower and stop, you know, becoming a leader. And it doesn't take anyone to tell you you're a leader. Just go and believe it and do it and, and start with whatever you have now. Start with whatever you have now, with whatever you have today. But just start. You're going to start finding the momentum and finding the tools and finding the how while you start. I think the universe actually recognizes that. Alejandro, <laughs> Can you, do you remember a moment when someone looked at you and said, you look good and, and, and you hadn't heard that perhaps all your life? Wow. What a great question. Um, actually, it wasn't like someone that said it. I came out in um, People um, magazine in, in Espanol, like the 50 most beautiful people. And when I saw my picture, on the cover of people, I was like, what? Like for the first time. And I was like, I was already an adult, right? And I was like, what? Am I beautiful? Like after so many years of therapy and affirmations and all these like Tony Robbins seminars who I admire, you know, I, I read it and I looked at myself like on the cover and I was like, is that me? And I think I finally recognized the hard work that little fat boy had wow. done. I, all the struggles he had gone through and yeah, because everyone saw it but me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Self-image, yeah. Exactly. As soon as I recognized him and as soon as I started loving him and I, as soon as I started like empowering him and saying thank you for being part of my story, thank you for being part of my journey, I think every st everything started getting better, right? The company I was offered to be the host of the Univision number one rated morning show. Like when I just showed myself as I was and I, I said, this is who I have been. And I started like empowering this kid and giving him the, the value he deserved. I think things got better. You know, I was, I was, when I was struggling actor in LA, I, I was always ashamed of who I was, you know, as an overweight kid. And I never really showed my pictures. I never told anyone I was overweight. It was something that I didn't really want to, you know, remember. It was like this dark past that you didn't yes. want to revisit because there's a lot of negative, painful emotions associated with those pictures. Correct. Uh -huh. And as soon as I, you know, started showing him and, and, and flaunting him, <laughs> I think I became more powerful and that became part of me. And people started admiring just the kid, right? Not me. Every time I, I do something big, I'm like, that's my little you know, 314 pounds guy who just doesn't take no for an answer and who just 
works very hard and who is here standing after everything he has gone through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-image is so powerful. There's a really good book. I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it or read it. The Psycho Cybernetics. Oh, I haven't, but I'm going to check it out. Oh, man. This this book, man, it is the, I think it's the best book on self-image. It's written wow. by a, what is it? A, a plastic uh, surgeon who works with people who obviously think they have self-image issues. And he just explains like in such great detail how self-image show like people see themselves in a way that is untrue because people will explain all these issues to them and the doctor will just be looking at them like you don't have any of these issues <laughs> but he'll still he would do the work and then the people would be happy but he wouldn't really change much or he wouldn't really do so much because they looked fine but it's such a powerful book on self-image and how it plays such a role in how we view ourselves and how it affects our self-esteem and confidence I, I think if anyone can relate with self-image issues in their past or in the present, this book is the number one. I've read hundreds of books and this is the number one book on that topic. I'm going to read it. Thanks for, for the recommendation. Yeah. yeah, you will eat it up and uh, it'll be very hard to put that book down. It's an older book and some of those older books are uh, are very good, but really powerful interview so far. Let's go into the knowledge round. I'm just going to ask you a few rapid fire questions here. Alejandro, you're ready for the knowledge round. <laughs> I'm ready, Andrew. Have you ever felt like you weren't the strong grounded man that you know you're capable of becoming? Like there's something more inside of you, but you don't know how to get it out. Me too. Years ago, I was broke, sleeping on my brother's couch, and just got out of a serious breakup that left me on the floor for months. Now, I have a multiple six-figure business. I'm in the best shape of my life, have an abundant dating life, and live on the beach here in San Diego. I want you to break through too and create the life that you want. And because people kept asking me so many questions, I've created this free video training series on becoming a strong, grounded man so that you can have more freedom, love, and connection in your life. I'll also teach you how to build real backbone to boost your masculinity as a man so that you can have more respect, power, and confidence personally and professionally. Simply go to kfmconfidence.com to get this training. Again, that's kfmconfidence.com. Also, I share the number one conversation that your father never had with you about women. That will be a major wake-up call for 90% of you and will improve the quality of your relationships forever. Go to kfmconfidence.com to get this free training today. Welcome to the knowledge round where the guests will be asked rapid fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives starting in three, two, one showtime. My first question is what advice would you give to someone who's feeling really lost and lacking a sense of direction in their life? You know, as I said, as I said before, reassuring them that, you know, they're not alone in that feeling that we all feel the same and, and, and in order for you to achieve greatness, you have to go through like deep shit and, um, you know, really overcome every obstacles and, and just keep working, keep going forward. Great. Great. What do you think is holding most men back from becoming stronger grounded men today? Fear, excuses, self-doubt, fear of failing, laziness, wanting to please everyone. Sometimes fear of being successful. You know, I think a lot of us are, 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 are full of fear of just being successful, right? judging others, criticizing yourself, negative thoughts. I think that, you know, if you plan on being successful, there are certain aspects of your life that you need to say goodbye to. You have to be ready to let it go. There are chains that, that, that bind you and will hold you from moving forward. Just like the constant excuses that we say to ourselves each day. Oh, I'll change tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. No, do it now. Start right now. Stop doubting that you can do it and actually do it. Show yourself that you're capable to achieving what you thought you couldn't. If you can't believe in yourself, you know, how will others? Oh, and, and, and here's another idea. Take, take proactivity to another level. If you aren't motivated or proactive, you'll never be successful. Work hard. Work very, very, very hard. I tell people around me, wow, now you fly, you fly private jets. Wow, you have a Ferrari. And I'm like, yeah, work harder than anyone you know. Surround yourself with leaders and learn from them, right? Instead of like going out Friday night, going out Saturday night, just work. Remove those that take away from your time and from your life and just introduce those who only add value to your life. If it doesn't add value, just get rid of it and be positive and, and most importantly, do not allow fear get in the way of your goal. 
And you have a New York Times bestselling book. I want to give credit to that. And so for those listening, think skinny, feel fit. Uh, go to Amazon, check that out, and in available in, in multiple languages. Uh, but for yourself, Alejandro, what have been three of your most influential books that have helped you on your journey and briefly why? You know, the number one, and I try every day, right, to implement it, but uh, is The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz. It opens your eyes to new possibilities by applying the four principles to your life. They're simple, but adapting to these new habits, Don Miguel Ruiz emphasizes, you know, emphasizes will be very challenging. Like number one, being impeccable with your word. Two, don't take anything personal. Three, don't make assumptions. Four, always do your best. Um, you know, as challenging as they have been, they have created a fundamental set of values that I try, you know, I try to live by on a daily basis. Most of the time I fail on actually like implementing them, but I try, I, you know, I have sticker in my car and I have sticker in my room and I have sticker in my fridge, like be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personal. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. I think that book have, you know, tremendous impact in my life. Zero to one by Peter Thiel, because, you know, first of all, it's brilliant and it really taught me to understand that businesses succeed better when they differentiate rather than compete. And, you know, this one is, is fresh, right? I'm, I'm reading it right now for the second time, 64 Shots by Kevin Robbins. It's a, it's a true stimulation for any person's leadership journey. So if you're on your road to leadership and success, you have to read this book. 64 Shots by yes. Kevin Roberts. Yes. Okay, great, great, great. Just want to make sure we got that. And so now this is a scenario for yourself. So imagine you had 60 seconds with 25-year-old Alejandro and knowing what you now know today, if you could sit down with him and tell him what to do and not to do, what would that be? Hmm. That's a good one, man. I will tell him that's going to be okay, that life's downfalls are our greatest gift and that it's okay to mess up, to feel shitty, to worry about and you know, to worry about everything and to be sad that it's okay. I will tell him to never lose faith, to never stop dreaming and to always follow his heart. I will tell him to save his money and be smarter with his spending habits. Uh, you know, I would say, hey, Alejandro, watch it. You're spending too much money on that stupid watch or on that shirt. Do you really need it? I think you should save it. You should invest it. You should put it compounding. Your future self will thank you for that. He was very insecure. I was very insecure when I was 20. So I will tell him that he's beautiful just how he is, right? With the way, without the way, reach broke, that no one is perfect. And of course, you know, that I love him. I respect him. I honor him. That's he's perfect just the way he is. Yeah, that's what he needed to hear. I, I think many of us would... Uh would say something similar. That's very good. And now what would you say if you had to break it down or even if, if you have to summarize some of your main points is your philosophy on life and success? I think that, you know, just, you know, attitude is everything. Also, I think that sometimes in order to move forward, we have to start over and that's okay. Mistakes are only mistakes. If you didn't learn from them, there are mistakes. So just look for the lesson and see how it will turn into blessing. If you fall a time, just get up nine times and try again. You realize that you just learn eight new ways to never make the same mistake again. Remember that, you know, practice makes perfect. So it's perfectly fine to find a new strategy and start over. I always think of all the lives we've helped transform with Yes You Can and all those beautiful people who chose to start over, to move forward with their lives. They had to let go of the guilt, the blame, the fear, their unhealthy lifestyle in order to make a positive change. So it's when they tell me that their journey was worth it, that they feel better than ever, that I know that even after all the times they have felt and I have felt along the way, that, you know, our outcome was even better and that everything was worth it for me and for them. Beautiful. Well said. And now what is really exciting you today? Like what's getting you out of bed in the morning? Well, according to the current worldwide statistic, obesity is growing epidemic in the US, in Mexico, in Central America, Latin America, you know, which means my mission with Yes You Can is just beginning. There are still millions of people looking for hope, for inspiration, for a way to improve their health. And there's nothing that I look forward to most that being able to provide that hope, that inspiration, and the tools for them to accomplish their own transformation, both inside and out. I think as long as I feel that there are people that need 
and want to achieve emotional and physical health, I will never stop carrying out my mission. All right, guys, there you have it. Alejandro Shaban, the New York Times bestselling author of Think Skinny, Feel Fit and founder of Yes You Can. You can check out the his uh, wellness uh, website and supplements at yesyoucan.com. Alejandro, I wanna thank you for coming on this show, sharing your story, being vulnerable, authentic, and honest here with my community and imparting a, a invaluable wisdom here with all of us today. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me and thank you for your audience. And you know, today you make one of my dreams come true being on your show. I really admire your, your hard work, your dedication, your persistence, and you've done a great job inspiring us to actually get to that next step. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast. Hundreds of interviews and millions of downloads later, we're continuing to build an international movement and we're just getting started. So if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and leave a helpful review in iTunes because it really helps the podcast grow so we can impact even more men in the world who need this. Guys, this is all about living with purpose, where every day you only do things that matter to you. You wake up, live with purpose, and take massive action towards the life you want. And always remember, love the life you have while creating the life of your dreams. Go to kfmfree.com to get a surprise bonus I've made for my listeners. Again, that's kfmfree.com for something that's changed my life and I'm offering it to you for free. Also, check out my Amazon bestselling books that I've written for you to help you crush life at kfmauthor.com. Again, that's kfmauthor.com to see all the books I've created to help you break through in life. This is your host, Andrew Farabee, founder of knowledgeformen.com, and I'll see you in the next episode.